All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Landers Lounge. Well, today well, we've got two of the greatest finishers uh, to lace up the boots for the Landers. Uh, we've got the Golden Bulls all the way up in uh, Jeff, Land, uh, Jeff Wilson joining us and Waisaki Naholo. He's flown all the way back from uh, London uh, to be with us. Goldie, I'm going to start with you. You must be really, really filthy with Wise that he stole that try scoring record that you held for so, so long. He didn't steal it. He didn't steal it. He well and truly deserved it. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Look, I mean, I had the pleasure. I was lucky enough um, to coach Wasaki not long after he came to New Zealand. And uh, you, know, you could tell then straight away, this is in the New Zealand under 20 sort of environment where he wasn't eligible because that's the first question I asked. Why are we coaching this guy? Because he's not eligible yet. And then I watched him at training. and said, ah, that was a good reason we're keeping this guy around. I'll tell you what, though. Um, look, Look, I've got no issue with that whatsoever. To be fair, though, he didn't have to play at Carisbrook. Now, let's, you know, like it's a wonderful, wonderful ground, but conditions were slightly a little bit better at Forsyth Bar Stadium that he got used to. So he had the pleasure of running on top of the ground more than uh, I had to, every so often, had to run through it. So what you're saying is you probably would have scored 100 if you had played all your games. At- <laughs> no, I'm not saying that at all. Going to- <laughs> I'm not saying that at all. I, look, I, played, I, was a, I like to think of myself as more as a facilitator. That's yeah. the way I, I like to think of it. Nice, mate. And uh, Wise, I'll come to you. You've obviously, uh, as I alluded to in the intro, you've made your way back from, um, from London, mm-hmm. mate, and back with the family now in Dunedin. How's it going with the wee bubs? Can you give us a wee introduction of uh, who and uh, what's his name? Yeah, um, yeah, it's good to be back home, bro. And uh, the little one's up, uh, up Rosa and Holo. Uh, he's four months now, so he's going pretty good. He's good. How's everything going with you over in London, mate? Are you enjoying the overseas experience? Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's everything's just kind of uh, been made easy for me because of the uh, Kiwi boys that are there and the Australian boys. And I think uh, Siko Piquet, when they all came through Kelston and all, uh, yeah. I don't know what school there was. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's good. Good, like you played and uh, talked to them before, so it kind of made things a bit easier. Uh, Australian London coaches. Irish. London Irish, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So really good, really good crew there. Oh, awesome, mate. Uh, Goldie, I'm going to take you back, mate. Take you well and truly back, sort of back about as far as your hairline, mate, to '96 when it all sort of. It's still going. Uh, it's still going. <laughs> oh, brilliant. That's what I like to hear. Um, '96. Take, take you long. What were those days it. like? Because you played in the amateur days and then transitioned into the first like professional contracts. Can you sort of give us an enlighten us into what those sort of times were like, the transition phase? Because from what I've heard from a lot of you old boys, those were the, the great days. Yeah, they, they, they really were fun. And, and look, if you've been watching Sky, like I'm sure you have been, there's been a lot of old footage, a lot of old games. And it's been great, you know, to reminisce about the teams and guys I've played with. But there's no doubt it was significantly different. I mean, when we turned professional, it really, it, it, it just gave us more time to train. And we didn't really know what we were going to train. So the first couple of years, we just did attack. You just did more and more attack. No one, no one trained defense. And that was reflective of the games. You watched it and, and there was space everywhere. And you forwards kept running to every ruck just so you could stand on somebody. I mean, that's one of the things one of my kids says, what's that? One of my kids said, what's that player doing? It's standing all over the other. And I said, that's why I didn't get anywhere near them, son. That's exactly, and I think that would still clean up some of the things we see in our game, but it was so different. And then, like you say, there were still some things that carried over from the amateur game, and that was generally off the field. Uh, you know, the fact that we were professional, but we didn't know what being a professional athlete really, really meant. And, and so it took time you know, for, for us to understand that, particularly that first year of Super Rugby, because all of a sudden we were given means, we were getting our first contract, the paychecks are coming in, and you're going, all of a sudden we're playing an afternoon game, and we're all done by about 4.30, Joey, on the road. So it's time to have a couple of bevies, have a beer or two, and then and go out on the town, and then, and then travel on home. So it was just significantly different, you know. That was, and that carried over for a couple of years. And, and uh, you know, I think it, it took time for everyone to work out. And then all of a sudden, more coaches got involved, more information. Trainers started getting their pound of flesh. They wanted more out of you. And then, then some structure came into the game. But not, the beauty of it was, for sort of the first couple of years, we still had some fun. And, and the annual or, or nightly in Dunedin or our late afternoon sort of Gardies, sort of um, bowler cook routine, that sort of started, you know. Uh, uh, none of those are open anymore, which is a good indication 
of what, what happened to the game. Let's be honest, the, the times have changed. And I'll, I'll talk to a lot of uh, guys from your era, Goldie, on, on this, and none of them really want to spill any of the beans to, on uh, some of the stories, the good old times, like you alluded to, around Guardies and some of the characters. I'm thinking <laughs> of the Alices, the John Leslie's, the Tony Browns, yourself. Surely you've got something for us, something funny well, that happened in those times. So, the former I know, I know, I know there's the old Joseph, the Jamie Josephs of the world, you know, all of those guys. Look, you, you, but we all know it's a significantly different time. And our connection in particular, you know, for, um, with uh, the students was really close, really tight. And, and you know, you're, the invitations to house parties and that, that was just part of, usually it was the players having the parties, to be fair. Um, but I, I must admit, there was, one, there was one standout night at the end of one season where we'd, we'd, we'd had a day at, at the Guardies at the Sports Tavern uh, downstairs and we'd had, we'd had a great, great, great time. It got to the end of the night and the tradition then was you'd grab a crate. They just, they're closed now, so they're not going to get in trouble with this. They, they'd crack the tops open and you'd go door to door. And I went one time with Mark Ellis door to door and he was determined to not only wake everyone up at one o'clock in the morning, but to, to maybe go looking for things he thought were there in the past that weren't there, that weren't there. And so, look, I must admit there was one, there was one house that we went into, knocked on the door, and he sort of disappeared into a room, and he actually ended up lifting up the, uh, on the ground, there was a, um, a bit of carpet that was a bit loose. He lifted it up, up and then disappeared. He was, he was, he'd got under the house, and he was looking for, for something in particular. And I'm sort of explaining... And we've all had a few of this. I'm explaining to the person whose who's room it is, that it's all right, there's no problems, he's a good guy, there's no, there's no issues, I don't know what he's looking for under there. Um, and uh, sure enough, uh, I went and had a look. I, I, I don't know how I could see him. He got himself stuck in the grate, you know, the little wee grates yeah. at the side of the house. He was stuck with one arm out and his head stuck between his neck. And I'm all good, I'm all good, no problems. Here. <laughs> so that was a standard, you know, like that was what he did. I must admit, no, no house ever didn't have a beer with us. I mean, that was, that was how connected we were to the students. They'd just go, oh, the rugby boys are on. The, this is the one time of the year we expect them to do this. So I don't know if Brownie lets you get up to those days but, uh, now, but I tell you what, they were, they were fun. No, Brownie leads it, mate. But um, was, you're not a Southern man like Goldie who was born and raised south and uh, came up the road to, to Dunedin. Mm. Um, you, you found your way down to the Hollanders and a different sort of route. And that was through uh, Goldie's good mate on the breakdown, JK, giving you the boot uh, from the Blues. And then <laughs> us picking you up. I remind, I remind him about <laughs> all the time. I remind him about all the time. Sort of for you, what, as a Fijian lad who had only probably like lived in the North Island, you'd obviously been around the South Island with NPC, but coming down from the bright lights of Auckland down to the, the dirty old South, how, how was that for a transition, bud? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was I don't know, man. It was. It was. It was a bit of a, a weird year that year. I mean, 2014 was a good year for my return for us, and then before I came down, and um, it wasn't a good year, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a great year, bro. <laughs> no, that, well, I came down. I was 2013. I was at the Blues, and 2014 I was playing sevens in my return, and and I, I think my second year. At the Blues, I was supposed to go back in 2015, but they were obviously didn't want me there. And uh, the Landers picked me up, but I remember uh, before I signed for the Blues, uh, <laughs> Jared Hawara was calling me there. They were like, Bro, you better sign sign for the Landers, or when we play you, I'm going to smash you. But <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> yeah, do it, man. <laughs> like, like that matters for him. Like it makes <laughs> it <any laughs> whatsoever. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, my, my uncle played played for the Landers at uh, uh, ICF2 level, so that was quite a, yeah. He, he was very proud that I came down for the Landers as well. And, and obviously everything. in 2015, everyone knows what happened that year. You had an absolutely outstanding year, but you had actually signed to go to France, right? You were going, you were heading over to mm -hmm. Clermont, is that right? Yeah, yeah. So coming down to the Landers, it was like, I would just go down there, hold the pads for the boys, and, you know, my agent has mentioned mentioned to me about uh, going, going to Clermont and so we were just on our way down here to hold the pads and you know kill time and get ready to go over. <laughs> yeah we, we had a good year and things changed for us. And then you obviously you uh, made the All Blacks that year and then mm -hmm. somehow got out of your contract. Um, what was that sort of negotiation like? Were you obviously pretty keen to hang around and make the most of that All Black experience? 
Yeah, like oh, I'd say expensive. That's what the expensive was. <laughs> <laughs> what a pay cut that next year. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was yeah, it was like uh, we we went on an end of year tour. I think we finished up in France. I think, and then <laughs> Chrono and uh, Fozzy, like they came up to me and was like, "Oh, it must be nice going home after after this long tour because they had to go do coaching uh, coaching uh, clinics in." Uh, with the Clemon Clemon crew, so just to you know make it up. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if it's a fair trade. <laughs> with overseas, that you you obviously finished footy and then went back yeah. to cricket. Um, yeah. Can you sort no. of talk? No, I never went overseas. Business? No, it wasn't. Uh, look, uh, I mean, there were, there were a number of opportunities, but for me, it was it wasn't sort of in my DNA. Uh, and, and to be fair. You know, um, my life, particularly, was still here in New Zealand. I'd sort of got to a point where I needed a change, and uh, I'd uh, obviously met my current wife, uh, Adina, Ade, and so, you know, she was playing netball for New Zealand at the time. So it was really difficult for me to consider even going. You know, so we were sort of forging a life together here. So, you know, in the end, that was the the circumstances. You know, and but I, in some ways, you know, that to me, I have no regrets about that. You know, uh, and I talk to guys who have played overseas, and they've had a fantastic time doing it. Um, for me, it just wasn't wasn't uh, a motivating factor and something I was uh, prepared to do. And, you know, look, I, I know the game's different and, and uh, over there, and that was probably another side of it. You know, I, I know it's certainly a lot more physical. I'm sure, Saki, you can talk about this. It's, it's um, you know, it's a four-dominated game. And, and uh, you know, that, that's, that's a generally, I didn't really know what the forwards did for my whole career. So why would I go into an environment where they expected me to do some of those things just like them? I remember when I got, it was, it was demanded of me that I had to contest over the ball, that was that got me one step closer to retiring. I can tell you that. No, no, you got to go and get that. I said, why? There's like that's going to hurt, you know. So th- there were some circumstances. There's no doubt the game had changed when I'd uh, I finished up. Yeah, bloody hell. Hey, uh, Goldie. Now we all know that Waisaki has his own song. Is there a little bit of envy there that you didn't have a song written about yourself that caught on? We didn't of- need a song. <laughs> we had the Highlanders song, mate. Otago Highlanders. That's my, that's all we had. We didn't need our own songs. They just played that over and over. That was like on a loop, man. No problem at all. Like we just, just that was it was awesome. We scored a try and like, hey? like a sort of a new age version, maybe maybe rolling yeah. up. Oh, I mean, you guys will be able to you know bring it into the like twentieth century or the twenty first century. So reality is, why not? I mean, I anyone who was part of that era, they remember that, that song. You know, they remember being part of that. We didn't need, you know, special chants. To be fair, though, the fact that I love it that they're chanting Waisaki's chant when he's not even playing at yeah. grounds. It's like, it's like, that's awesome. You know, that, that tells you you've left the mark on the game, right? Yeah. How, how was that for you, Wise? Like, having the whole zoo, well, the whole crowd, you know, for the, the post-2015 final for the next three seasons that you're with the team, just chanting your name basically any time that that, that song came on. It was uh, it was your moment. How good's that? You oh, I'm quite idea. You know, you just got to be grateful for it. And um, I thought I thought they were taking a piss when they first came out. And then because <laughs> when we were at the final in Wellington, and then we go back to the hotel, and the chance going off outside, and I was like, I don't know. I, I went out the other door at at out the bus. Coming out the bus, I had to go out the other way because everyone was you know. It was crazy outside, but now I'm just, you know, just grateful for it and, and I appreciate all the, the, the support. And does it go, does it, does it take off over in uh, London, mate? Be a new team? <laughs> yeah, uh, it has gone off a few times. Awesome, awesome. It's good. Oh, how good is that? Even at the darts, you hear them charging it when you're on those dart championships, eh? Yeah, exactly. It's, over. it's unbelievable. It's um, so good. Well, you know, there's been a bit of media this sort of week around uh, Geordie Barrett, his decision to leave uh, cr- well, cricket and focus on footy. For you, that decision, when did that... Well, it didn't, it didn't happen straight away. Look, it was no different. Look, I, I, through my teenage years, I thought I'd be a cricketer. That was, you know, I spent most of my time at a cricket club growing up, you know, and... and and I'd played for a target um, at cricket. And, and to me, that was what, you know, I, I spent most of my time doing. And then in the rugby season, I just played rugby. But once you've put on that black jersey, you know, and once you've been down that path, and you can see that talent in Geordie Barrett. I, I honestly believe that there will be another dual international, someone like a Geordie Barrett. Yeah, yeah. You look pretty handy in that, uh, 
that charity match. Oh, mate. All right. All right. Looks good. Bowl a good line of length, good. Goldie. Get on that back length. Heavy ball. Yeah, heavy ball. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sure Wasaki's got some creating skills, though. I don't doubt it. <laughs> Kili Kipi, no, is that boy. just the Fijian thing, or is that Samoan, the Kili Kipi was? I didn't hear about, uh, oh, you only hear about cricket in Fiji on the news. Like, uh, I've never seen anyone play it over there. Like, I've never seen anyone in Fiji play it either. <laughs> people Maybe always think like, was like Sam Owen though, wasn't he? Yeah, I think Sam Owen's played it or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, All right, fellas, it's come to the time of, uh, of la- naming your all-time landers 15. Now, the, we talked about it off uh, before we started recording how hard it was to uh, come up with your 15. Don't want to offend anyone, but... Uh, I'll let you take it away first, Goldie. I'm sure you put a lot of thought into your selections. Hold on, I've got some sun coming. Here we go. I'll get rid of the sun. Um, look, this is hard. This is tough because uh, as I started putting down my team, I didn't. I, there was no one after the year 2000, and I thought, hey, that's not really fair on it. We've had a championship winning side. So, look, I, I, I looked at this and said, you know, that we had so many wonderful players. Um, what I didn't do, though, was I kept people in their specialist positions people moving people around to fit them in and all that sort of carry on, you know? So I saw a lot of people put case muse at loose head prop, you know, he, he could play there. He's very, very good at it, but I didn't think he was better than Carl Hoff, for example. So I went with, I went with Carl Hoff, Anton Oliver and um, Carl Heyman up front. Um, uh, Simon Maley. What's that? Bad news misses out. What's that? You better watch out next time you're in Dunham, son. Uh, Mate, I, I might be I might be old, but he's still slower than me. Uh, he ain't. That's no <laughs> problem. He, he hasn't. <laughs> he ain't gonna catch me. Big man. Um, Big and mom. he's not selling my house. So I'm not selling my house. So he's not. I got no issues with it. So so no. I, yeah, I know. Look, we know how good Case was, he, and 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 that's that. But his career was split as well. You know, Carl Heyman was. You know, for me, through and through, uh, a wonderful, wonderful rugby player. Um, do, do you want me to go through the whole lot, or do you want to just start there, or you want no, to no, go? Lots. Yeah, carry on with your fifteen. Well. You didn't make it, Joey, unfortunately. But Simon yeah. Mailing, and I went Tom Franklin. Yeah, nice. that was tough. I went. I, I found out Tom Donnelly came into the equation. John Blakey, who I, I'm my good mates with, he certainly came into it as well. But uh, just because Beagle's always around, and you can't miss him. <laughs> yeah. um, but I mean, look, uh, that, that to me, um, Simon Mailing was an outstanding footballer. Really, really was. Uh, Loose forwards, Tane Randall at blindside. Josh Cronfeld and Nasi Manu at number eight. Um, Aaron Smith, Tony Brown, Peter Alatini, Malakai Fekatoa. And then on the left wing, I went Brian Lima. And on the right wing, I went Waisaki Naholo. Oh. And Can and I see my that bit of paper? Can I just see that bit of paper to make sure that you did actually go with Saki Naholo? My, oh, my name's not You've down got, there. It would have been deleted about four times. No, uh, no, no, no. And Ben Smith, my most influential Highlander of all time, is at fullback for my 15. So that's how I sort of played it out. I did have to sort of go through, and but for me, um, you know, look, Lima was really, really good um, uh, for the Highlanders, but that that was sort of, you know, I couldn't sort of go past. But you know, we've had some some great players, you know. And who's you going to uh, be your captain and your coach, mate? Sorry, I forgot. To, uh, uh, yeah, oh, you, 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 I think you go. You got to go regime about coaches, you know. And I think that combination of, of Jamie and Brownie, you know, that, that that works. It really worked, you know. And the good people they had around them. And in terms of my captain, that's uh, that's a really, really good question. But I think given more what he did and the way he went about it, I think Nasi Manu for me. Yeah. I think the it's way that he led. Goalie. Yeah, I just think of the way he led that team and the type of person and individual was. We had a lot of guys who could probably do it, obviously, Tane and Anton. Um, I wouldn't consider any of the backs given the responsibility. Bender, maybe, you know. Uh, but other than that, that would be the way I'd go. Well, Saki, well, what have you got for us, mate? consider himself as a captain material. But no, <laughs> no. Right, why is your 15, please, pal? Bro, it, it was hard, eh, like I said. I, I don't know what props do, and they props are props, locks are locks, you know. Good, I'm glad to think things don't change their name. They don't. <laughs> like, I don't know what number one and the number three. Well, I don't know what the difference are. So they just <laughs> scrum hard. <laughs> so I've got I got uh, Doogie, Brendan, uh, Edmund, and Josh Honick as my props. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, Colty, a hooker. Yeah. Sorry, Joey. I picked um, Bone, Alex Ainsley. Yeah. Nice. And T. Franks. In the locks. Good combination. Uh, Elliot at six. Shane Christie at seven. Oh, yeah. And uh, Nacho at eight. Oh, 
Massive moment. I'm sending you some old footage. Yeah, very, very new school footage yeah. for that team. I was, and yeah. you need to look at some old games. That's what we need to look at. Yeah, I should, yeah. I don't know. But that's all right. I understand. He always said he'd watch any of his uncle's games. <laughs> <laughs> Only watch his highlights, man. <laughs> Uh, and I had to pick T Frank, so he gives me so much uh, stick about like I scored my first try against the Reds, and he passed me the ball. He reckons I had I only had to walk it over, and he did all the work. And so, Mate, that was all yeah. my tries. What are you on about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a finisher. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I told him. Uh, my my halfback, uh, Nagy, Aaron Smith, Ten Lima. I had to pick Pat Osborne on the wing. He's he's a he's he's good for us there. Uh, number twelve, Richard Buckman. Uh, the I was every uh, every position there guy in the backs. Yeah. Uh, Mala Mala at thirteen, Jeff at fourteen, and so someone from another time and another place. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shot, brother. <laughs> well, yeah. that's the only reason. Uh, I, the only reason I got agreed to come on. And you obviously surely got Bender at fullback, right? Yeah, Bender at fullback. Bender at fullback. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, captain, coach, mate, please. Uh, Nacho is uh, my captain and uh, Brownie. Brownies, uh, yeah, coach, yeah. nice. Razzle, dazzle. Razzle, All right, yeah. fellas, always nice to lock horns with a couple of outside backs and get a bit of a different perspective. You okay. don't know what we do. <laughs> you got no idea what we do. Oh, catch it's horns. Foreign, it's foreign yeah. to you, I reckon. Talk a little bit of smack, look good on the weekends. That's about it. It's pretty simple, isn't it, Goldie? <laughs> hey, look good, play good. Isn't that what they say? Well, that's what they reckon. That's, what they reckon. that's why I was never any good. <laughs> What happened to me? <laughs> what happened to me? You know, <laughs> well, I didn't say you had to have hair gone. You're still good looking. Oh, right. Okay, you got you. You're going to be good looking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, All right, boys. Always good to catch up and thank you for your time. Um, stay safe and uh, much love to your family, eh? Pleasure, Wheels. Pleasure. See you, Sucky. Bye, bro. Pleasure.